Welcome to the Tech Guys Who Invest podcast, where each week you will learn how to invest wisely and safely. On this show, you'll hear about lessons Adam and Kevin are learning on their investor journey, as well as insights from industry experts. Our vision is to educate, entertain, and bring tons of value to you. Welcome to our show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Tech Guys Who Invest podcast, where each week you learn how to invest wisely and safely. This week's episode is a little bit different from what you're used to hearing. For the first time ever in over 100 episodes, we have a monologue. Adam is currently enjoying some quality vacation time with his family, and we thought it would be an opportune time to try something new. In a few weeks, you'll have the opportunity to listen to Adam by himself on the Tech Guys Who Invest podcast. Now, as this format is new, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you want more of it? Let us know by sending us an email to techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com. And speaking of letting us know how you feel, if you enjoy the TGWI podcast, don't forget to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts because it helps us grow our community and connect with more like-minded people looking to learn how to invest wisely and safely just like you. This episode is about building wealth while working your W-2. Is it possible to really build wealth with a W-2 job? Do you have to quit your J-O-B to become financially free? Yes, that was a purposeful pun there. I'll be sharing my thoughts on all of these questions for today's episode. When I first started investing in real estate, I had this vision of grandeur of exiting the rat race, leaving my W-2, and never looking back. I was adamant that a W-2 was nothing more than just a waste of time. As I've gotten wiser the last couple of years, I would actually disagree with my younger self. It's a matter of perspective and personalities. If you enjoy your job and it's providing you with a certain lifestyle that you're happy with, then by all means, keep it while still investing and creating wealth for the future. If you're like me, you don't mind working for somebody else and having somebody kind of educate you or tell you what it is the overall goal needs to be and how to get you there, then hey, why not continue to work for a W-2? If you don't enjoy your job and cannot stand working for someone else, then you might have a different opinion about staying at your current employer. It bothers me that the message many investors are saying is that a W-2 is a scam and that you're spending time building someone else's wealth and dream while ignoring your own aspirations and not building your own wealth. It is definitely possible to build wealth while you're working in your W-2. I'm doing it now. Adam is doing it now, and many other investors are in the same position. In fact, a lot of the guests that we have on our show, they start out with a W-2, invest in real estate on the side, and then eventually transition to doing it full-time because they love it, because they want to do more with it. It just reached a exit velocity, if you will, that they felt they needed to be full-time as a real estate investor. But you don't have to do that. That doesn't necessarily have to be you. In fact, the past investors that Adam and I have worked with to invest in real estate, they use it as one way to build wealth while working their W-2. For me personally, my goal is to own enough cash flowing assets to replace my W-2 income. That way I have the option to exit the rat race in the event that I feel like it, in the event that I'm not happy with what it is I'm doing anymore. When I achieve that number, who knows, maybe I'll still enjoy what I do as much as I do today. If that's the case, maybe I won't quit if I'm happy. But I love knowing that I'll have the option, that I can just walk away if I so please. It's also an additional layer of security for myself, knowing that cash flowing assets are funding a lifestyle, they're paying for my expenses, and building wealth at the same time. As you invest, you need to first have a goal in mind. Think about what it is you want your money to do. Is it to replace your current salary? Is it to build wealth for the future so that you're not solely reliant on your 401k? Now, these are goals that I, nor Adam, nor anyone else can really answer for you. You'll have to sit down, plan, and even visualize what you want your future to look like financially. I'm not saying it's easy, but being this intentional is hugely important and helpful. Now, since I just mentioned a 401k, let's talk about that, shall we? I used to think that maxing out my 401k until I retire would be enough to sustain me and my family 
for the rest of our lives. But after immersing myself in the investing and personal finance space, I don't think a 401k alone will be able to provide for my family and I. In fact, I recently read a report that said the number one fear of retirees was losing money before they died. So living in that fear of not having enough money or it running out before you pass away was the number one fear for those in the later stages of their life. That's crazy to think about and that's not what I want to experience. But that's also why I've decided to diversify outside of my 401k. Another reason is I want more control with my money that's less subjected to the ups and downs of Wall Street which is why actually I don't invest in my 401k at all. In fact, Adam and I did an entire episode about this. If you want to listen to it, head over to tgwipodcast.com forward slash 401k dash contributions. This is not financial advice, and I'm not trying to persuade you to withdraw your 401k and double down on real estate investing. I'm just sharing why I personally don't contribute to my 401k so that you get an understanding of how I'm thinking about it. Instead, I do have a self-directed IRA that I use to invest in real estate. The good news for you is that opening a self-directed IRA is extremely easy to do, and there are multiple ways that you can fund it and continue to contribute to it. I could put you in touch with a few different custodians that I've worked with if you're ready to learn more. Just shoot me an email at techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com and put self-directed IRA custodians in the subject line. When it comes to funding a self-directed IRA, you can use additional funds outside of your 401k contributions to fund it. So if you max out your 401k, you can still contribute to uh, an IRA. And a self-directed IRA, of course, is an IRA. Another way to fund a self-directed IRA is to use your 401k from a previous employer. So if you had one job and maxed out that 401k for, I don't know, two years, and that would be $39,000 and change with the um, compounding interest, whatever you were able to gain with it, hopefully it was invested in something, you could take that money, roll it over into a self-directed IRA, and then use that to invest in real estate. But let's say you've been with the same employer since you started working, and that's the only 401k you have. Or you've rolled everything into a new 401k with the current employer that you have. How can you use that money to open a self-directed IRA? What you can do is look into an in-service rollover. Now, your company may not provide this, so it might be a moot point, but it's worth asking. What it means is that as you're currently with your employer and the 401k custodian that your employer provides you with, while you're working there, you can take some of that money and roll it over into a self-directed IRA and begin to invest in real estate while you have the money still left in your current 401k investing in whatever it is the 401k is invested in. It may seem like I'm thrashing 401ks, and while I have strong opinions about them, I don't think they're all that bad. Maxing out a 401k requires discipline. For example, to contribute the maximum amount of $19,500 in uh, in, in 12 calendar months, that would cost you about $1,650 a month. Building wealth and achieving financial freedom requires similar discipline. It's the discipline to be intentional with your money and even more intentional about the assets you choose to invest in. Again, these are uh, questions you need to really answer for yourself. How much can you really contribute? What can you really invest in? Or what do you want to invest in? I don't think that a W-2 is as negative as people make it out to be when it comes to building wealth. Are you still trading your time for money? Yes, absolutely that is what you're doing. Are you building someone else's wealth? Yes, you are. But that doesn't mean you couldn't use the income from your employer to build your own wealth by acquiring assets that are working for you so that you eventually no longer have to trade your time for money and the assets can basically pay you and fund your lifestyle. And if you do it right, you could even buy assets to build wealth, create cash flow, and decrease your tax burden while you're still in the rat race. It's completely doable. If you want to learn more about how I'm doing it for myself and the investors that I work with, send me an email at techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com. So that's it for this week's episode. Our first monologue on the TGWI podcast. What do you think of this format? Do you want more monologues? Want to hear less from Kevin and more from Adam? Let us know. We would love to hear. Just shoot us that email. We'd love to get your thoughts on this format. So let us know. Thanks, everybody. 
Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast for the latest episode updates and to receive investor insights to help you invest wisely and safely. You can join the TGWI Insiders community at tgwipodcast.com forward slash subscribe. Don't forget to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. The feedback helps us grow and helps us give you the best investing content out there. For a step-by-step guide on how to leave a review, head over to tgwipodcast.com forward slash review. And lastly, we'd love to connect with you. The best way to reach us is by sending us an email at techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com.